Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about software as a service. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, what advice would you give on starting your own software as a service business? Well, I can give you a few short tips, but if you wanted me to go through like everything from all right, so how do you establish yourself as a company all the way up until like this is how you run your entire infrastructure and sort of how you do the business and all of that stuff uh, that is way more than I can fit into this video it is uh, well it is something that I am familiar with and it is something that I could probably give you some tips on but uh, as I said it's sort of it, it's too big it's like one of those questions where how would you become a really good software developer or how do I become something something like that it's so, so large scope that I can sit here and I can talk for weeks well technically I am talking for weeks uh, that's why I make each video like the way I do but if we keep it high level uh, the way I usually would suggest that you go about this is to first and foremost try to minimize the amount of work that you put into operations and focus on your business development now the reason why I say that is because the thing that developers usually do which is the difference between them and entrepreneurs is that developers they like you have to ask yourself a little bit, in my opinion, at the least, why are you making this product that you're creating? Is the idea of the product to make it a digital masterpiece, or is the idea to make money? And that is something that a lot of engineers have a problem with, because pr most engineers are perfectionists. And so they focus a lot, and trust me, I was guilty of this as well. Uh, do, like I wasted tons of time on this once upon a time. Uh, and I actually made more progress later on in my career like I could I could make something much more sustainable much 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 better uh, when I had gotten to the point where I realized that I'm not benefiting my company from creating a sophisticated microservices architecture with the latest bells and whistles when the thing I'm building is this simple little application that has like a few users and so making this high tech super solution that of course I was excited about was really only for me it only benefited me and trust me it got old really quickly it was fun in the beginning but after a while you start to realize that shit I'm doing all this extra work so that I can maintain a perfect system that does the same thing as I could have achieved with a much simpler setup and that is in my this is actually one of the things that I use as a measurement of maturity in a software developer where as you may or may may or may not have heard me say that you have to use the right tool for the problem because my analogy is usually something like you can remove an ant hill with a nuclear bomb but that's probably not the right tool or you could water a plant with a fire hose but that's also probably not the right tool maybe just a little, like a glass of water would be enough to get you to where you need to go because the thing that you should focus on in an early stage of your business is to get the proof of concept done so that it provides the value that you need in order to make your business grow because the money is the thing that is most problematic in the start of things most of the tools that you will need are all out there and most of them are very affordable like services and stuff like that and some of them are like free you can basically start an entire IT company for almost nothing if you wanted to so you're main problem is getting customers and getting them like, what they need as quickly as possible so you can build up a revenue stream and that's why I tell people try to remove all the overhead don't self host if you don't have to that's why I'm a big fan of using say serverless and uh, like, uh, cloud providers in the especially in the early days because when you do that you can pay a small amount of money usually not we're talking like a few bucks for like a minimalistic system and really go pretty far on that model 
uh, you can scale that very well without doing almost extra work. You can almost exclusively focus on building business logic and like going to talking to customers and so forth and so forth instead of you know managing all the servers and load balancing and like all this extra stuff so anything you can offload that you don't have to do you should so you can focus on business de business development and then I suggest also that you always pick the simplest stack that you can pick the absolute simplest thing that you can imagine but it doesn't matter what it is. If you don't need to run something, I mean, if you can build the entire company on WordPress, then build the entire company on WordPress or Django or something like that. If you need something more sophisticated, build with the simplest thing that you can. Like for me, I would my default is always a full TypeScript stack, pretty much, and that's because for me, like it's something that I know fairly well, and it's also something that I know it's like it will give me everything that I could possibly want, no matter what I'm gonna do. So for me, that is the perfect stack. But some, then you have people who go and say, hey, Ruby on Rails. Yeah, go and do it in Ruby on Rails. Or use Laravel if you're a PHP person or something like that. Use the simplest thing. Because as I said, of the same thing I was saying earlier, these more sophisticated solutions, you could use high end languages unless you're doing something very specific. It is in. It, it's not a good idea to get bogged down into the tech. And before you dismiss this, like I want you to know, guys, that Twitter reached millions of users before they changed from Ruby. GitHub is still running. Oh, I know. So it's GitLab. GitLab is one of the largest. It's a gigantic system, a, a, a company, and there I think they're still running on Ruby. So what I'm saying is that the, you don't don't get into this idea that the technology pe people are going to give you good advice here. I think some of them are because some of them are mature and like level-headed, but don't get into like optimizing for you know for a community that is not going to help you because the engineers they're gonna tell you about performance and like all of this stuff and sure all these things are very useful all things these things are very nice but what's not in the in their sort of community is the business mindset and business mindset is maximize revenue minimize cost and in this context delivery speed speed quote unquote should equal money therefore keeping the simplest possible process for delivering the uh, like getting to that delivery speed is the best thing for you. Optimizing for performance is almost ignorant, I would say, uh, unless you're doing something very specific when you have a starting, emerging business. And then finally, as I sort of touched on it already, focus on getting paying customers. If your business idea is about, if, if you work for years on something or like uh, for tons of time and you haven't actually established whether or not this thing is going to get off the ground, uh, you will, might find that you spent all this time building something nobody's going to pay you for or you're, there's no sustainable business model. That is the number one problem in IT today. How do you monetize uh, your system? This is a problem that even both Spotify and Facebook and other companies struggled with way up until they became like they had millions of users before they started figuring out how to fix this problem. Monetizing software is extremely difficult uh, in many cases and so you need to have an eye on that. And the earlier you can get to a stage where you get some revenue from your system. Now you've established value, which is the main thing you should focus on because when people are willing to pay for your system, even if it's a small system, it doesn't have to be an advanced thing, now you have proven that the thing you are doing is value building because that is the biggest threshold for every software company in the world. How do you get people who are mostly conditioned to thinking they should get everything for free to pay for the thing that you are making because if you can't get them to pay you or find someone who's going to pay you for the thing you're doing uh, to get you through like the growth stage because in the early days you have no money and you have to get to and before you make this into a company you basically have to have some revenue otherwise you can't grow the company that problem is more important than anything else. So a lot of developers I see focus more on the coding and optimizing and then they sort of sit in their own little bubble and they just build shit that nobody cares about. They're not actually adding value to their platform. So unless the, the thing that you are working on has a business requirement that is tied to a paying customer or someone who actually wants this thing, do not focus on it. It is in, it's not worth it. You're just wasting time. So what I want you to take away from this is that 
the devs in when they start a new software, it doesn't have to be an SAS uh, business type of thing or anything, any IT company that they might be using. They usually focus more on their own personal gratification, like their tech stack and like how it's going to be perfect and so forth and so forth. And all these things matter to a certain point. It depends on what you're doing, right? But for the most part, I see the these companies, they fail for the same reason, because you get too deep into the trendiest tech or you get too deep in optimizing your workflows or all these sort of nonsense things that sort of doesn't actually provide any value to the people that are going to pay you and that is the the reality of uh, what like the reality of an entrepreneur it's it's the same thing in business guys y business i mean not saying business is easy but at its core level business is about maximizing your profits and you can if you don't understand that you don't have to have flawless software to make money then you're in the wrong area like then you're you should not need to change your mindset because the goal is not to make perfect software in the beginning it's almost po impossible because you're so experimental you're trying to figure out what's going to be sustainable that focusing too much on quality in the early days is more likely to end with you burning yourself out or building stuff that nobody's going to pay you for and then actually losing the entire company because you couldn't get to a sustainable revenue stream quickly quickly enough that's why speed delivery speed and a very very simple tech stack as much as possible is my biggest tips to you how to actually get your business off the ground because if you're spending more time on writing code than you are finding new customers or finding ways of getting more people onto your platform then you're you're disproportionate ideally you should sp spend as much time possible getting more people to pay for the thing than you do s developing the thing you should only continue improving on the system if it ties back to someone actually go uh, your company actually doing more business or something like that from the thing that you are optimizing for and if you look at how many companies run guys they're not fixing every minute detail of their entire infrastructure as a company they own they try to focus on things that will yield some type of net gain for their bottom line and that is exactly what you should focus on especially in the early days have a great day